Hello and welcome to M152, Sustaining Power Projection. Within the classroom, this lesson will be conducted in two parts. During part one of the lesson, we will have brief discussions concerning topics related to power projection. In the second part of this lesson, we will conduct a practical exercise where you will be broken down into groups based on your assigned readings and examined uh, challenges associated with projecting power. Today's lesson will focus on the policy, doctrine, and procedures covering or relevant to projecting military power, mobilization, deployment, sustainment, and redeployment, uh, pre-deployment activities, the division's concept of movement from home station to the port of embarkation, and force packaging and the time-phased force deployment data, or TIPFID. This slide describes what force projection is. It lists the eight components of force projection and addresses where these components will be covered during your AOC block of instruction. Additionally, on the right of this slide are the essential components needed to enable force projection. During 151, uh, you reviewed key doctrinal concepts on the roles and capabilities of uh, U.S. Army divisions, including the structure capabilities and limitations of current multiple command posts within the division. The content of the lessons you received during the M100 block will support the execution of M149, which is your deployment practicum. During our core block of instruction, we talked about the strategic support area and discussed how many of the units that uh, provide capabilities from this area uh, enable the geographic combatant commander uh, his operations. One of the organizations discussed was the Army Materiel Command that manages our installations through its subordinate Installation Management Command, or MCOM. In 2018, AMC described the strategic support area in relation to multi-domain operations as being the primary support area for Army units, as it is the Army's initial industrial supply, manpower, and power projection base for all operations. Through the Army Sustainment Command, AMC synchronizes and integrates the material uh, enterprise capabilities that support force projection from Army power projection platforms and mobilization force generation installations. Force projection begins at home. Don't forget, the SSA is at risk and vulnerable. Our adversaries have studied our capabilities and our weaknesses. On the previous slide, I mentioned MCOM and power projection platforms. Well, this slide depicts Army and Marine power projection platforms that are connected to our strategic rail corridor, strategic highways network, and national port readiness network. Army power projection platforms are managed by AMCs Installation Management Command on bases that contain operational units uh, such as Fort Cavazos and Fort Liberty. These bases are power projection platforms. That is, they can deploy brigade-sized forces within 10 days of notification to meet geographic commanders, the geographic commander's operational requirements. Throughout the United States, Guard and Reserve Forces conduct their mobilizations and demobilizations at mobilization force generation installations like uh, Fort McCoy in Wisconsin or Fort Shelby in Mississippi. Uh, Fort Bliss and Fort Cavazos are also considered uh, MFGIs, and my understanding is that Fort Riley is or will soon fall under this 
designation. Collectively, these installations serve as locations for National Guard and reservists to conduct mobilization and demobilization activities. The chart on the right may be a little bit dated, but it is important to understand the capabilities provided by our reserve component. Over 80%, for example, uh, of the Army's transportation assets are found within guard or reserve formations. Strategic mobility incorporates, incorporates uh, sea lift, air lift, uh, and preposition stocks. Each of these requires significant coordination between the geographic combatant commanders, uh, the Army Service Component Commands, Transcom, and other governmental departments. There are several terms and acronyms on this slide that you, may, uh, that you might already be familiar with, and possibly a few new ones that are explained in your readings. We're not going to dig into those right now. But should know that when deploying forces by air and sea, we use a combination of capabilities provided by the Department of Defense, but also the Department of Transportation and commercial assets to meet operational lift requirements. The United States Merchant Marine is an organization composed of uh, U.S. civilian mariners and U.S. civilian and federally owned uh, merchant vessels. In times of war, the Merchant Marine can be an auxiliary to the United States Navy and be called upon to deliver military personnel and materiel for the, uh, for the military. Uh, for you trivia buffs, you might be interested to know that within the comic strips, uh, Popeye was, the, uh, was a merchant mariner first before joining the Coast Guard and later on the Navy. And that uh, Popeye himself was based on this guy, this real-life character, Frank uh, Rocky Fiegel, a sailor in the Merchant Marines. Uh, and uh, as you can probably tell, he kind of looks like Popeye. Anyway, uh, in prior lessons, you learned how we stage capability forward in our Geographic Combatant Command's AORs by pre-positioning stocks that we can deploy unit personnel without all of their MTO equipment, thereby reducing the amount of time required to establish capability forward to support uh, theater opening operations. So in summary, uh, strategic mobility incorporates sea lift, air lift, and preposition stocks, and each of these require significant joint interagency and intergovernmental coordination. And for all of this to happen, we rely heavily on the industrial capability of the JLENT. This slide highlights that the Joint Staff J3 is responsible for overseeing the joint deployment process that Transcom is the, uh, of which Transcom is the Joint Deployment and Distribution Coordinator. Joint Operational Planning uh, that includes the establishment of deployment timelines to support operations, is conducted in the Joint Planning uh, and Execution System, or JOPES. The Joint Capabilities uh, Requirements Manager, uh, it's a tool that interfaces with JOPES, allowing Global Forest Management personnel, or Global Forest Managers, um, and members of the JPEC or Joint Planning and Execution community, uh, community uh, to build capability packages. Uh, perhaps, though, most importantly, it provides the ability to compare the planning database uh, with the JOPES database to determine if planned forces align with actual forces deployed to fill a requirement. Within JOPES, a time-phased force deployment data, uh, or TIFID, is created that details requirements for unit movements by personnel, short tons, nodes, uh, specific dates, all required to meet the uh, geographic combatant commander's requirements. The, the TIFID uh, depicts force requirements in terms of capability, 
and force flow to assess the plan, and it's used to analyze component sourcing and transportation feasibility. The information found on a tip fit. Now, understanding how to read and make sense of this information is beyond the scope of this class. However, you would certain, it would certainly behoove you to familiarize yourself with the terms uh, found on the tip fit and, and what they mean. You can't just leave that up to the DTO. All right, take a moment to review the top five takeaways for M152. We've covered a lot of ground, um, and we didn't cover everything. So just keep that in mind uh, about this class and the other ones in M100. Uh, it's intended to support your preparations for the deployment practicum that we will conduct during M149. Okay, this has been an overview of M152, uh, Sustaining Power Projection. This video is not a replacement or a substitute for your required readings, but you already know that. Thanks.